Hello guys, Sanbonani. Uh, welcome to the second episode. This one is titled Spinal Cord Sum Music. In today's video, I'll be explaining your basic uh, music theory in a way that almost everyone can grasp and start applying it right away. Okay. Uh, I want you to think of notes uh, and, and, and scales as the tools that you use to translate what's in your head onto the instrument or onto a piece of paper you know meaning like how you play them and how you write them how you name them for instance a visual artist uses lines charcoal colors and canvas to to show us what's in his mind so with music you have your scales you have your notes and then you have a certain type of movement that I have nicknamed the baby walk so you can understand the movement you know why do I call it the baby walk uh, let's look at a baby when, when 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 they start to walk it will be the right foot followed by the left foot and even if they start on the left foot inevitably the right foot will follow so same applies with how you play your notes how you move okay let's zoom in into the keyboard and let me show you what i'm talking about the first note you play would be okay this thing's off sorry about that okay the first note the second note the third note and so on and so on okay so this is how you move you you, you can't it, it doesn't make sense you move here here and then here here okay how they define this this is this is a this is a tone it's called the full tone but i wanted to focus on the movement you remember baby walk yeah? from the first note to the second one there's a note in between that we have skipped we did not play we played and they complement each other yeah? so the third note we play also has a note in between so that's also a full tone and then the following note does not have anything in between this is when now it becomes a semitone from here you play three tones three full tones and then semitone so i've just i've just given you the formula which is the walk the walk is just a nickname for you to grasp it's full tone full tone semitone full tone full tone full tone and then semitone this is what it sounds like very very important the more you practice this the more you play around with it the better you will get and it's most basic that's how you can also figure out which key a song is in which 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 scale are you supposed to play because now let me show you a practical example what i just played was a, a c scale c major okay so this is called the c sharp if i were to play on c sharp this would be my first note but now for me to make it a full tone i would have to skip this note and play this one then we're playing a scale when we're doing that then it would be full tone eh? semitone full tone full tone full tone semitone without explanation
Okay, let's zoom out. That is how you move when you start to learn basic music theory. That's you do that and then you do it so many times that it's embedded in your vocabulary. Then you can fly. Okay. Uh, Salphatonic. The Salphatonic. It's good to know. A lot of people are introduced to it in the choir, but the scale I just played now if you were to sing i'm not i'm not a singer so forgive me on this one you know you know you know do re mi fa sol la ti do you're not hearing it for the first time so if you play and you sing then you'll get there much faster because then what will happen you would memorize these sounds and then you can build your own sound or play something that is in your mind much quicker okay so i cannot emphasize enough practice is the only thing that will get you to master this thing okay so so far, I've given you only the movement, how to move. Tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. Okay? So, what I need you to do is, is to separate the playing and the memorizing of the tones and how they sound. And uh, memorizing the names. Because, let me show you something, many a times, okay, let's zoom in on the keyboard. When someone is learning a keyboard for the first time, okay, let me write with my left. Normally, they would write these letters on the keyboard. Uh, this would be E, F, and then... Yo G, yo which on Janlo. This would be A, this would be B, and this would be C. Okay, I'm I'm actually right-handed. I just wanted you to be able to see. So I don't like this method because when you when you are playing these letters won't be there if, if you're in a concert or, or, or a show whatever it is where you're going to be playing you, you, you won't have all these letters written all over so it's quite good practice learning from the onset how like knowing okay I don't have a cloth knowing these notes and the quicker you do that then 10 times better for you okay Mm, what else? Oh, okay. These letters are also important for navigating and knowing which key your song is in. And even the chords, the chords that you are going to learn are going to be based on the root note. Uh, say maybe you want to play a C chord. Now, I've been showing you the C, uh, C major scale. Ne? This is a C. So, a major chord would be the root is here. C. This is a C chord. You see? But let us not worry about that. For now, until, until, until you know it okay so i said learn playing and navigating um, uh, separate the two playing and navigating when you do it you focus only on that and then when you are memorizing now the names then i want i want you to focus on that so 
you just get on your keyboard or on your guitar whatever instrument you're doing and then you call out the names this is a c this is c sharp this would be a d d sharp and then this would be an e f there's no e sharp f e f f sharp g g sharp a a sharp b and then c no b sharp no e sharp no b sharp okay so when you get advanced remember we, we spoke about our baby who learns to walk at some stage they become a toddler then now they start running and uh, at some point they can hop on on on, on one leg e e either leg so this is what would happen after you memorize this basic scale that i've just given you then now you will start to do alternate picking and advanced picking all that nice stuff but let's let us not confuse ourselves let us stick to the basic baby walk what i've just nicknamed the walk learn that first i promise you if you 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 you, you pick up a, a, a sheet of music and then it's blurry use your ears you use your ears and then you can hear you can hear the progression you can hear the chord progression you can hear the sounds once you find two minimum two notes i'm telling you then you can find the key all over this thing okay one last thing that's very important that i have to make you aware of okay let's zoom in on the keyboard Th this is a c okay when 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 you get to this note here it completes now the circle this is a this is another c but at a higher octave this is also a c what's the difference the pitch but sorry all of them c okay but don't worry about that now but what you should know is when you start your scale on a c it will definitely end on c that's when now you start playing the other octave enough about uh, uh, um, jargon musical jargon let's focus on the walk let's focus on the letters i'm going to repeat this one because it's very important this is a c c sharp d sorry d sharp e f no e sharp f sharp g g sharp a a sharp b c no b sharp okay then the other stuff i think i'll make another video then now we can start talking chords uh, alternate picking scales different types of scales the majors the minor the harmonics and they are a lot so why i named this episode spinal chord is because really this basic that i've just given to you it's 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 the spine of everything you can only evolve from this basic scale then you can go crazy now and show us what's happening in here it would be easier for you to translate but if you don't do this if you skip this step and then you rush over to fruity loops and whatnot without any type of practice without any type of music knowledge then you uh, you are going to make one, two note, three note songs, which are just not. Let's leave it. Get silly. But what I'm trying to say is you are not going to make good music. You know, you have to have a logical flow. That's, uh, good songs have a, a beginning and then you'll have your chorus and then you have a bridge and then you have an ending. 
you know there's a way of just composing properly you know there's a lot of songs out there that are just eh, they're not even worthy of being called songs but hey eh, right well but please yeah learn this so you can make good music from the start okay let me see what did i miss Okay, the last point, I cannot emphasize enough, again, practice and know your instrument. Practice and know your instrument. This is, okay, for me, I, 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 I think, I, I, I nickname this the mother of all instruments. You know, if, even if we were playing somewhere and we need to get in tune, the pianist would be the one gets on middle C and gives us a tuning you know so it's very important if you're playing a guitar if you want to learn to play guitar guitars have to be tuned every now and then like every two days I mean if you have a good guitar and you can stay a week maybe but it's good practice to tune your guitar every time I mean I, I, have, a, I have a daughter when she sees my guitar standing there and then now she starts tweaking the knobs and whatnot so i cannot just whip it out and start playing i have to check if it's in tune all the time not because of my daughter but because it's good practice sometimes when you put it inside the casing the knobs get tweaked something and the tuning pegs work on tension if i don't know if you, if you guys have noticed they work on tension so over time they would they would tend to lose the tension that's when you have to tune it again i'll show you now i'll i'll take out the guitar and i'll show you and yeah i think we're almost done what's left is for me to show you what six notes can do and then after the six notes i'll show you how, how how to do the baby walk on the guitar and then yeah we'll be we'll be finished okay so before i show you all those funny things thank you so much for watching and um we would love to grow as a channel and one way of supporting us would be booking me for my services uh buy my music it's all over you can just google dj guava juice spotify amazon deezer distro kid tiktok instagram the music is there you know just buy my music book me for my services and yeah thank you so much now let me put this thing away mm. So I can show you now. Okay, another tip. For a start, I would advise you to get a, a nylon guitar. I've had I've had this guitar for a very long time. Why I love a nylon because it's it's gentle on the fingers. When you when you when you learn guitar, you are going to suffer here. And you have to embrace the pain get used to it and love it because it will be part of your life the rest of your life if you're serious about playing enough talk i said let me show you what six notes can do only six <laughs> okay let's play something by ushui <laughs> okay six only six so play around with 
the baby walk. Let me let me show you the walk on the guitar, sorry. Can you hear that? Okay, let me show you now a good uh, practice routine. What you want to do is you play it from the first note until the last one. Okay, you repeat the same thing. Mm -hmm. I think you, you 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 get the picture okay then the better you get then now you start working your way up I get it. we went down then you have to work your way up again let me play it slowly so you can see what I'm talking about going down would be now let's go back So now you combine the thing, the better you get, then you go up and down, which, which would be... You see, that speed is not magic. It, it, it comes with a lot of practice. Okay? And again, the more you play, the better you get, then you can go further. It does go further, but don't... Don't crack your skull. I'm just I'm just showing you. Octave. Remember octave? Okay, let me slow it down and show you. Last note. I, I hope your ear does tell you that ask this. we've repeated do re mi fa so la ti do two times different pitch okay let me play it for the last time favor and practice all of that okay and one last thing you're gonna need to buy a better guitar I mean the more you 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 start expressing yourself this is going to limit you because this is this is this is the 12th fret ne? and on on, on 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 these guitars you have this wood here that's going to get in in your way then it's going to be difficult that's when you're going to need something similar to this or something like this let me put this one down something like this okay on this one on this one the, the 12th fret is here and can you see how much room I still have here to play for you. I have a lot of room. I can still go up until here. And there's nothing standing in my way. Okay? But for learning, I... Oh, sorry. No maganjani. I highly, highly recommend nylon. Okay? I don't care how much you love steel. I, I don't care. I don't know. Maybe someone told you something I did not hear and you think steel is the way to go. Yes, it sounds nice. It's fine. But nylon serves a different purpose. And for practice, I promise you, it's easier on the fingers. You can, you can spend hours on end here without injuring your fingers. Steel will chow you, my man. Even this one. When I've played long enough, it's, it starts to bend. That's why a lot of people use uh, 
a peak this and then you have the other ones that they wear on their thumb and they have a piece of plastic sticking out so in everything that you do please be serious take the baby walk serious and i'll see you in another video thank you so much thank you